It is our pleasure to welcome in over Zoom ESPN College Football Insider and expert BYU National Champion, longtime friend of the program, Trevor Maddich. Look at that background. Trevor, nice. uh, you've, you've upgraded your background. It's, it's good to see you join officially uh, from a distance, BYU Sports Nation. What do you mean background? I've decorated my house with this. <laughs> <laughs> You're throwing a party? That's awesome. I love it. Hey, what an incredible last 96 hours or so within college football. Let's just get your initial reaction to Texas and Oklahoma officially declaring their intention to not renew their media rights with the Big 12 in 2025 and join the SEC. What is this going to do to college football and college sports as we know it? This is epic. It's gigantic. It's one of the most seismic changes in college football in our lifetime because it won't just be this happening. I mean, if, if it is, if it's just Texas and Oklahoma going to the SEC, then there'll be a big reshuffling. But I kind of get a suspicion that there's a lot more going on behind the scenes, and this is only the beginning. And so this being the snowball at the top of the mountain coming down and growing into a massive snowball than an avalanche is something that we need to be ready for. Now, it's interesting because in 2011, I guess 2010, when the dominoes started to fall, it was Texas and Oklahoma to the Pac-12 that initially started that. They leveraged that into more money, the Longhorn Network, and 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 just cemented their position in the Big 12. Is there any chance this is actually the play for them, where they want they don't want an equal cut, they want even more, and that they don't actually go to the SEC? It is theoretically possible, although they will have made the rest of the Big 12 hate them even more than they do. And the thing is, they are the driver of the Big 12. And I am confident that if the Big 12 came to Texas and Oklahoma and offered a certain uh, package, they gave them even more than they're already getting, that the rest of the Big 12 would bite their tongue and agree, even though they would hate it, because the alternative for them, worst case scenario, is that it dissolves and most of them will be either independent or scrambling to beg a group of five conference to take them. This is the possibility, if that's the only thing that happens, that Oklahoma and Texas go to the SEC. So I don't know, though, that Oklahoma and Texas would want to do that. The reason is that the, the possibility of going to the SEC, not just with its money, but with its stability long term going forward, would be enticing. It also means that it's not out of the question that the ACC or the Big Ten could throw their hat in the ring and start to bid for Oklahoma and Texas. So right now, lots of things are on the table. And where they end up, I don't think it will be the current Big 12. Trevor Maddox of ESPN with us on BYU Sports Nation. Let's fast forward to 2023, Trevor. It, it, in our day and age, things want or people want things to happen fast. It is a give it to me right now. I, I need this to happen right now. Do, do you expect Texas and Oklahoma to wait all the way until 2025 to make a move, or do you expect them to shell out some money and go where they want to go before that? Well, the reports now is that under the contract they have with the Big 12, if they leave before the end of this current contract, which is in the summer of 2025, they each have to pay $76 million. But they may find it worthwhile because their boosters could stroke a couple of checks and cover that right away so that they're not laying ducks in that conference. So that that's a possibility. But also keep in mind the possibility that this is not just about the SEC adding those two. Keep in mind that the SEC might keep going the SEC might turn this into not a 16-team super conference, but a 20 or a 30-team conference that is now the new tier one in college football. Now, when they have that going, it's just speculation. It's just hypothetical. But if they were to put together something like that and not stop at Texas and Oklahoma, but bring in Clemson, Florida State, you know, bring in, who knows, bring in USC, Stanford, and Oregon, you never know then they could negotiate not just with their current TV partners, but all of a sudden the media companies, which are starting, or social media companies, internet companies, I guess, that are starting to get involved. Amazon now has the Thursday night NFL package. So where is that going to lead? And how much of this might be long-term positioning by the SEC to not just be the most powerful conference in college football, but to be the power in college football in a new division one. Now, I don't know that that's happening, but it's just fascinating to think about where this might go. And the money is part of it. The stability and inclusion in something that may happen like that down the road, I think is even bigger.
as much as we want to act like Texas is not back on the field, they are certainly a massive player off it with the most revenue and what they have did in 2010 and now here in 2021. It's really interesting. Okay, so obviously the dominoes of realignment are here. People are talking about expansion and realignment like it's the same thing. It is not. Realignment could be just power fives and a different power five. Then there's a team like BYU going, okay, where do we fit in this? How can BYU take advantage of this? I'm not necessarily, um, you know, of the opinion that if the Big 12, and this is our question of the day, Trevor, if the Big 12 asked BYU, hey, we want you right now to replace Texas or Oklahoma, whenever that is, um, do, would, would you take it if you're BYU? Because it feels like the Big 12 is incredibly unstable right now. I feel like BYU should just wait it out and see what happens and hope that they do get an invite to a Power 5 league. That is a very good possibility, although moving towards a 12-team playoff in a few years seems like a, a real, real boon for BYU because now they have an actual, honest-to-goodness, real possibility of making the playoff. When, it, when it's four, only about six or seven teams had a chance to compete for that. But at 12 now, BYU doesn't need to be in a conference. But what they're talking about is if everything kind of stays similar, you know, the SEC might expand, the Big 12 may or may not go away, but it's relatively similar then. This particular 12-team playoff concept is proposed to have the top six ranked conference champions get an automatic berth. The top four of those get a buy in the first round of the playoffs. And then there's six at large and BYU would be as an independent in great position to get one of those six at large berths. And the big 12 is not guaranteed to go away. The big 12, it's possible that they are guaranteed by the way, if those two teams leave, they're guaranteed to make less money, but the big 12 could just stay with those eight teams, add a BYU, add a San Diego state to get a Southern California market, add a Boise state, for example, and become a conference that won't make as much money as they would with Texas and Oklahoma leading the way, but still one that's a viable conference that will have a viable income stream from the broadcast partners that still has a conference champion that would qualify for one of those automatic bursts. And so in that regard, BYU could consider joining the Big 12 as they try to expand back out to 10 or 12 or 14 members. Right now, BYU, though, I think can just sit and wait because independence for them in the current scenarios that are on the table is still a really good place for BYU to be. Being in a conference is still a good place for BYU to be, especially as it, as it pertains to the access to the playoff. The thing they've got to watch for is if the SEC does continue to expand and start to bring in the power teams from other conferences and turn into that one big conference that then declares itself the bigger um, division in college football, then BYU as an independent would want to consider the possibility of trying to join something. Yeah. And I totally get that. And access to the playoff with the 12 team, uh, you know, uh, proposal. Totally. That's a way better thing for BYU. I don't think the end game for the Cougars necessarily is to, Hey, at some point, maybe once we get into that, right. Cause that's what it would take for BYU is got to use up the schedule, get in there once. If BYU can get more TV money, now it's actually in a power league because the power is access and money. So I love that idea. If I, I just don't think it's right now with the Big 12. Like if the Big 12 today said, hey, do you want to come in? I'm not sure it's a great move because we don't know if the Big 12 is going to continue to exist. But if they expand, like you said, with some of these other notable group of five teams, now that's actual expansion. Now I'd be in because well, it's, it's better than BYU's getting, who knows, one to two mil a game. Uh, at home. Now you're talking about something probably in the teens or 20s per year, which is a massive increase for BYU football. I, I think that's fair. And I think as media rights continue to get renegotiated, remember that that ESPN and everybody else that would like to broadcast BYU games understand that uniquely in college football, BYU has a, a not just a national, but an international fan base, BYU and Notre Dame, and for similar reasons, exciting brand of football, their affiliation with the church. And so those things make BYU very attractive as an independent and as a member of the conference. But because both of those would be viable for BYU under most likely scenarios, BYU doesn't have to jump. They can sit back and wait and see, you know, who, who calls them, who they might want to call, how things shake out. And there's no need for them to jump into a weaker conference if they think that's not the best thing for them to do long term. ESPN's Trevor Maddich on BYU Sports Nation. Looking at the eight teams that would remain in the Big 12 after the departure of Texas and Oklahoma. Trevor, who's the banner holder of the Big 12? Because football is king, so which program is the banner holder with the Longhorns and Sooners gone? 
Well, this is part of the problem for the Big 12 if they stay together as a conference in terms of their uh, attractiveness as a revenue producer for broadcast partners. Right now, the best team on the field is Iowa State. Oklahoma State's nipping at their heels. Those are two outstanding football programs that are um, critical to their, their local cities and counties and regions in terms of finances, in terms of pride, and all the things that they do. And they're really good, but the problem is you don't consider them a national name like Oklahoma and Texas. I think you'd have to have a team rise up now and start to beat the, the big teams in the SEC in order to be seen as more of a national brand. Well, who does that? Well, who's got those teams on the schedule right now? And so they can beat each other up. They can go undefeated within the conference and still as a national brand goes, they still need to beat either in the playoff, in a bowl game, or in a non-conference schedule. They need to beat a Clemson. They need to beat an Alabama or an LSU to get on people's radar outside of their region. So right now, who's, who's the flag bearer? The best teams. So you're looking at, at Iowa State, Oklahoma State, maybe TCU. Yeah, and who's to say the Big Ten doesn't come in and say, hey, Iowa State, Oklahoma State, what do you think about going to 16 teams Kansas? in the Big Ten? Kansas for hoops? Hey, if you're the, listen, here's one that'll make a lot, of, a lot of wailing and gnashing of teeth. What if the Big Ten says, okay, the SEC has now grown into this massive super conference. They want to elevate themselves above our level. The Big Ten doesn't think anybody is above them. What if the Big Ten hypothetically says, okay, USC, Stanford, Oregon, Washington, join the Big Ten. Yeah. Ooh. And, and that's a Imagine question, the Trevor. fallout from that. Yes, that's a question. Where's the Pac-12 sit in all this? Because this whole mm. time, I've always wanted BYU to be in the Pac-12. There's obvious issues with the we're a research institution, LGBTQ plus issues, blah, blah, blah. I At some point, I wonder if the Pac-12 says, okay, we know it's about football and we don't care about the research institution thing. Like at some point, as long as Stanford and Cal are in that league, I don't think BYU is in that league. But who knows? Who knows what happens? Because I like culturally, uh, geographically, it feels like the best fit, despite those issues I mentioned, would still be the Pac-12. Um, yet the Pac-12 has issues. So I don't know where BYU fits in all this, but the Pac-12 has got to sit here and go, do we still lay low in this? What, what do they do? Well, the Pac-12 has been striving towards national relevance for a while. I mean, they brought all their coaches out for a big media publicity run a few years ago to New York City, for goodness sake, to try to get people on the East Coast to be interested in Pac-12 football. They're moving towards it. They have an inherent disadvantage that their marquee games in the afternoon are played at a, in a time slot that doesn't get them on the, the highlights for most of the games of you know, the Midwest and the East. And that's a problem because you've got Pac-12 stars that are fantastic. You've got excellent teams in the Pac-12, but until they play, they can't be on the highlights at halftime of the next game. And so the time zone hurts them from that standpoint. That's where a team like a BYU would help them because BYU is that national brand. It's not just expanding their, their media footprint into the Salt Lake City area. They've got Utah for that. BYU, though, is a team that would expand the footprint of fan base without expanding the geographical footprint. But you're right about that. Now, maybe a compromise would be have BYU as a football-only member of the Pac-12 and let the rest of the Olympic sports stay in the West Coast Conference, which is a phenomenal conference. And I think that's been just a great a great thing for BYU basketball, et cetera, to be in. I love the West Coast Conference. But when it comes to people now surviving and thriving, it may be that the Pac-12 is ready to take another look at BYU and bring them into the fold for everything that they do bring to the table. Trevor, we appreciate the conversation. We feel like we're just getting started. We're going to do this often, I'm sure, over the next uh, weeks and months as the college football landscape changes, if you're okay with that. Uh, I'm fine with it. And just this is a teaser. What about paying players name, image, and likeness? How will that be affected by what's going on now with all these new conferences coming together and the money that they will be making? Whoa. Yeah, yeah, you bring up a fantastic point and certainly something for us all to sit back and think about. Trevor, uh, it's great to have you on the program. We appreciate the backdrop that you implemented, your redecoration of your house, and uh, we'll talk to you again soon. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Trevor Mattis of ESPN with us on BYU Sports Nation.